Hallelujah. The courts of heaven consist of books of destiny. And for anyone that knows the scriptures, we know that there are books written in heaven for our destiny. And even in the scriptures in Psalms 139, 16, reveals David's understanding of this. It says, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they are all written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. So in this, we know that David is declaring that there is a book in heaven that speaks not only of his makeup, but also of his destiny and purpose in life. So we're going to be praying for these books of destiny and our books personally to be opened. Because we know that the courts of heaven require those books to be opened if we are going to present our cases and our petitions to the Lord, the Most High God in heaven. So books existed. Lord, we know that God saw our substance. Our books had their beginning through God, seeing something before it existed that was yet unformed. Our destiny and purpose began through the prophetic nature of God as a seer. And so we know that our books are written in the courts of heaven. So as I pray right now, I pray for the books of destiny. But we must also take note that even in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 10, it also shows us here that the connection between the books of destiny in heaven and the courts of heaven does connect. For it reads, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousands, thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. So notice that the courts had to be seated and the books were open. There's a twofold thing happening here. First, the cases that are going to be presented are going to come from the books. Second, it will take the courtroom's operation to get what is in the books released fully on the earth. This is because Satan uses legal things to stop us from getting all that is meant for us. We must know how to present our case in the courts from the books of destiny in heaven. And we must learn how to fight, saints for what we were made for in the courts. This occurred with Peter in the scriptures in Luke 22, 31 through 32. We see that the devil's strategy is to stop Peter's influence because the Lord said in that scripture, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So we're going to be praying and petitioning God for our books of destiny. And as I pray, I pray, Lord, as I come and as we come and stand before you in your courts, we thank you that we have books in heaven. We thank you so much that you thought of us before time began and wrote our destinies and our purposes in the book in heaven. And as we stand before you, Lord, hallelujah, I declare in your courts, I want all that is in my book. We want all that is in our books. And we want to fulfill our destiny that is connected to your purposes on earth. Lord, that which you saw concerning me before time began. I ask that this might be my life, our life. I choose that which you have chosen for us and for me. And as I stand before your courts, Lord, I lay down my life 
as best as I can through your power, your Holy Spirit, according to Romans 12 and 1. I present myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, I ask also that the according to Ephesians 4 and 1, that I might have a walk worthy of the calling that was determined for me, written in the book in heaven. I also ask, Lord, that any case or accusation the devil would have against me before your courts would be silenced by the blood of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your blood speaks for me, and I agree with its testimony according to Hebrews 12 and 24. Lord, I thank you that your blood grants God the legal right to forgive me, remember me, and redeem me to the purpose that is in my book. Just as Peter's destiny and purpose was secured from the courts of heaven. So, Lord, I thank you that our destiny, that my destiny is secured as well. Lord, I declare before your courts that I am your servant. So please use me. I ask that my life might count for the kingdom of God as it is recorded in the books of destiny in heaven. And Lord, I also ask that according to Ephesians 2 and 10, that I, that we may walk and live as your workmanship. We realize, Lord, that your grace makes, makes us your work of art and a display of your splendor and glory. I ask, we ask before the courts that I, that we live in the rhythms of your grace. And I and we ask, Lord, that you should take us out of the grind of life and put us into your groove. Hallelujah. Lord, would you now bring about my empowerment through your spirit that from your strength I could fulfill all that is written in the books of destiny for me? Lord, I desire with great passion to fulfill your will. Please accept our request before you and let all that would resist my petition be revoked. Thank you, Lord, so much for loving me. I look forward with the expectation to fulfilling all that is in my book in heaven. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And now, Lord, we look to possessing our books. We thank you, Lord. And as we go forward before we pray, we should be aware as we seek to secure our destiny that it is not something we create. It is something that we as Christians and believers discover. According to 2 Timothy 1 and 9, Paul told Timothy that the purpose and grace were allotted to them before time began. He says that it is God. And it reads, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This is an amazing statement. Before there was the sun, moon, or stars, or all of which mark time, we have to know that God appointed to each of us purpose and grace. Purpose is what is written in our book, and grace is the power to fulfill it. So all of this have been waiting on us to discover it and step into it. One of the problems is that it is possible to not possess your book in the spiritual realm, even though it has been written and existed there. We might not have it. And the reason is we might not possess it in the spirit realm is the demonic has taken it captive because of issues in our bloodline or generational history. In other words, somewhere in our ancestral line, someone sold us to demonic powers. This has nothing to do with us going to heaven when we die, people. It does, however, have a great impact on whether we see heaven come to earth in the here and now and whether we fulfill our destiny. The accuser would use this as a legal right to keep us out of all that was written in our book. Remember that his motivation is not to stop our happiness, but to frustrate the purposes of God on earth. So, we're praying right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. And we thank you that we are going to possess our book and to recover and secure our books 
that have been taken captive. So Lord, as I come to stand before your courts, I thank you that I have a book written in heaven concerning my destiny and future. I was created and made for a divine purpose. Hallelujah. However, Lord, I sense that someone in my bloodline may have made a covenant with the devilish powers that has allowed them to hold my book captive. Hallelujah. Lord, as we stand before the courts of heaven, we are asking for our book back. I want the purpose that you made for me for, to be revealed and fulfilled. Lord, as I stand before you, we repent. I repent for any and all covenants made with demon powers. Any agreements or covenants my ancestry has made with devilish powers, I repent of right now, Lord. We repent in the name of Jesus. Any right these covenants have given the powers of darkness to take captive our books, O oh God. I am asking them to be annulled. I am sorry for any personal or generational involvement with demons and powers of darkness. I want nothing to do with them. We renounce that in the name of Jesus. We only want what is from you, Lord. And I say before the court that I am yours. Hallelujah. That the blood of Jesus has bought me. And as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Lord, I also ask that my bloodline and I be forgiven for any trust in or involvement or interaction with demon powers. Lord, we and I repent right now and ask that the blood of Jesus, according to Hebrews 12 and 24, would now speak on my behalf and undo any and every covenant that would empower demons to hold my book. I now want and decree my book freed. We decree that our book is freed. Hallelujah. Lord, I also now want to return to these demon powers, any claim they have on me. I want nothing of theirs. I only want what comes from you. You alone are my source, my strength, and my purpose for living. You are our source for living, Jesus. It is only you and you alone. Hallelujah. I also, Lord, now dispatch angels, the angelic host, the angelic realm. Hallelujah. We dispatch your angels to go and recover our books, wherever our books might be held up captive. And I ask for it to be found and retrieved. I say before you that because of your blood of Jesus, every legal right of the devil to hold my book is now revoked and removed. Hallelujah. The angels are now empowered and free to recover my book and bring it to me. At this time, hallelujah, saints of God, you should be looking in the spirit. Whatever you might see, hear, and sense that the Lord is saying to you in the atmosphere, or spiritual occurrences that it may be happening. These are the angels moving on your behalf. Keep looking and you may see your book being brought back to you. Expect God to move. This is a faith thing, guys. Lord, we thank you. I thank you. And I receive my book for me and even my family line. Hallelujah. Any and every book that belongs to me that has been dedicated to my ancestry, I now receive. Hallelujah. You may even see it. You may see more than one book. Keep looking, saints. God is moving. Each of us has our own book. And I have found, however, that the book of those in our family lines can be recovered as well. Also, if there are those who died prematurely and were unable to fulfill what was in their book, these books may also be retrieved. So keep looking, saints, and expecting in the name of Jesus. There are unfinished purposes within the family line that need to be stewarded into fullness. So, Lord, we thank you right now for your recovery and securing of our books. I receive it and dedicate myself to fulfilling all that was written about me before time began. I receive the grace that has already been given to me according to 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Lord, let your grace abound in me and through us and through us to fulfill all you wrote in our books. Lord, we love you. We love you so much. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we need to open the books of destiny. Once we have our books, saints, recovered, we are in possession of them. They need to be opened. Okay? 
When you look through scripture, you see books that are sealed and or closed. You also see open books in Daniel 12 and 4. It shows God instructing a book to be shut. So it reads, Daniel 12 and 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of end. Many sh shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. There are times books are closed because of divine timing, and there are times, however, when books are shut. Okay? And unless they are open, the purposes of God cannot be done. We see this in Revelations 5, 1 through 4. And that reads, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth, the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. And that's according to Revelations 5, 1 through 4. Now, this book needs to be open for God's will and passion to be done, right? John is seen weeping because he knows that there is a need for this book to be opened so that God's purpose can be fulfilled on the earth. We know that Jesus, as the line of Judah and the Lamb of God, prevailed to open this book. However, the tears of John were essential to the opening of this book. Heaven was not toying with John's emotions. They needed his intercession to open this book. Open books are essential to the operations of the courts of heaven. According to Daniel 10 and 7, it tells us the court's function is tied to the open books. And that reads, A fiery stream issued and, and came forth from before him. A thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. The courts were seated and the books were opened. Okay, so the reason why the books must be opened is because cases are to be presented from these books. You cannot present a case from the book that is closed. When the books are open, revelation of purpose and destiny can now flow freely. Many people have their books, but they are not opened. We shared in the last chapter, right? We just shared in the last prayer in the chapter, in this book, that signs that someone didn't have possession of their book. There are also signs that you have your book, but it is not open. There are basically two signs of this situation. The first is that you have a sense of destiny, but do not know the specifics of it. So you know that you're called to do something, but you're not quite sure what it is. Okay. The second is you have this awareness that you were created for a purpose, yet you do not know what the details of it is. And the second sign is the connected to this one. You feel a deep sense of frustration and confusion. You want the destiny written in your book, but you were created for but what you were created for is blurry and uncertain to you therefore you have a great lack of discernment you need your book open in the spirit realm so that the details of your destiny in the book can be known and this is seen in isaiah 29 10 through 12 okay and that reads well, there is no prophetic understanding in Revelations because the book is sealed. It says, For the Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, namely the prophets, and he has covered your heads, namely the seers. The whole vision has become to you like the words of the book that is sealed, which men deliver to one who is literate, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I can't not. For it is sealed. Then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I am not illiterate. The prophets have no revelation, is what it's saying. And the seers cannot see because of the book that is sealed. When we have our books, but they are not open, there will be lack of understanding, revelation, and discernment of what is in them. We must open these books. Once the books are open, not only will revelation be had, we will be able to present before the courts of heaven our case for the destiny we were made for. So we're just going to say a prayer so we can pray to see the books of heaven concerning 
us opened. Okay? So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, as I come before you to your courts, I present myself before you. I thank you for all that Jesus has done for me that allows me to stand in the holy place. I declare from this place that you, Lord, are my Lord and King. I surrender to you all that I am. Thank you so much for loving me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that for the book in heaven that is written about me. I thank you for that. And I thank you that I now possess this book. I now ask that this book would be opened and revelation of your purpose for my life. Hallelujah. Now come to me. I ask that anything that would cause my book to be shut and cause me confusion, frustration, and lack of detailed knowledge of my purpose be revoked and removed in the name of Jesus. I approach your courts with deep intercession, just as Jesus was heard according to Hebrews 5 and 7 because of his fear of God, which manifested through tears of prayer and supplication. Please let me be heard. We position and I position myself before you and ask that our tears and cries be used by heaven to open the book concerning our destiny and future. Lord, would you allow heaven to regard my tears and intercession for the opening of my book? Just as John wept for the book to be opened in Revelation chapter 5. So I intercede with passion for my book to be opened. Lord, I am desperate for your will to be done in my life, and I want only your purpose accomplished. Lord, as I see my book opened, I now come and stand before you to present from this open book a case for my destiny to be fulfilled according to your purpose for me. I ask that it might manifest on earth. Lord, I ask that you might be glorified and that your purpose would be done. Thank you, Lord. So any detailed understanding you have concerning your destiny and purpose, you should present before the Lord, God. And then, Lord, we just lay aside in the name of Jesus anything that is of our own desires and not yours. Should what I want interfere with your intent, I lay it before you. I say with Jesus, according to Hebrews 5 and 7, I come, O God, it is written of me in the volume of of the book to do your will your will lord is my passion please allow your desires and purposes be fulfilled in me as they are written in the volume of the book in heaven we love you i love you lord and lay my life before you in your courts in jesus name i pray we pray amen <music>